Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be covering the rules for the full game of Galaxy Trucker. Now, this video is the third in a series, which will help you learn how to play the game. If you haven't seen the first two videos, I recommend you go and do that, because there's a lot of information in them which I'm going to build upon here, and a lot of this video won't make much sense unless you've watched those first. So, on with the video! A full game of Galaxy Trucker lasts for three rounds, and you use a bigger ship each round. In round one, you use this nice small ship, but in round two, you flip that board over and use this ship template instead. For round three, you use an even bigger ship. Check out this bad boy. On the reverse of this is a special class 3A ship, which is described under the variant rules in the rulebook. In the test flight, we used a fixed set of eight adventure cards, which were all drawn from the deck with the one on the back. But in the full game, you'll use a random set of cards, drawn from the different decks depending on the round number. Before you start building, you need to make three piles of adventure cards. Each pile should contain the cards depicted on this space on the flight board. So in round one, you make three piles of two cards each. These cards are placed in the slots just here. In round two, you place this tile onto this space, showing that each pile of cards is now two cards from the two deck and one from the one deck. And in round three, you flip this tile over and you make three piles of four cards as shown. Whilst we're looking at this tile, you'll notice some of the differences from round one. The number of triangles here show how far apart the markers on the flight track are placed at the start of the flight. This shows the reward in credits for the order in which you finish, and the bonus for the best looking ship increases each round. Anyway, back to the cards. Thanks to Corporation Incorporated's Prognostics division, you are allowed to look at these adventure cards whilst you're still building your ship. Once you have added at least one component to your ship, you can take a break from building and pick up any of these piles of cards and look through them. You can look at the cards for as long as you like, but you must then return them to the same space in order to continue building or you can look at another pile. And this is a really important part of the game. If you don't look at the cards at all, then you're not going to have any idea what dangers are ahead. But if you take your time to look at the cards, then you'll have some idea of the dangers that you're going to face. For example, if you see lots of enemies, you want to build lots of cannons. And if you see lots of planets, you want to build lots of cargo holds. When everyone's done building, you then make up a fourth pile of cards in the same way that you made the other three. You put all four piles together and give them a shuffle to create the adventure deck. If the number on top does not match the current round number, keep shuffling until it does. So even if you looked at all three piles during the building stage, there is still the fourth pile of cards which provide an unknown element. When building your ship, you can actually reserve up to two components by placing them in the top right of your shipboard. This is very useful, for example, when you draw a component that you really want, but just not right now. Once you've placed a component into your reserve area, nobody else can take it, and you cannot return it to the warehouse. And if you don't use any components here during the building, then it counts against you as a lost component at the end of the flight. Not only are you racing against the other players for building your ship, but now you're racing against time itself. As soon as someone says go, the timer is started and placed in the position on the flight board corresponding to the current round number. When the timer runs out, nothing actually happens, but then any player can restart the timer and place it onto the next circle. When the timer is on the number one space and it runs out, then a player who has finished building, and only a player who has finished building, may then flip it over one last time and place it onto the start space. This last flip measures how much time all other players have to complete their ships. And when that last time runs out, everyone must stop building immediately and quickly grab a numbered tile. If you remember back to the first video, I showed you a couple of components that I said I would explain later. So these components are special life support systems for aliens, and in order for them to work, they need to be attached directly to a cabin. This makes that cabin habitable by one alien of the corresponding colour. When you place your crew onto your ship, you don't have to use the life support system, 
So in this example, you could add a brown alien to this crew cabin, or instead, just place two human crew as normal. Note that the pilot cabin at the middle of your ship must always have two humans in it. And also, your ship cannot have more than one alien of each colour. Now, onto what these guys do. First of all, they count as a crew member for the purposes of the adventure cards, but more importantly, they have a special ability. The purple guys are a warlike species, and they will increase your cannon strength. They will add plus two to the total cannon strength of your ship, as long as the cannon strength you have is greater than zero. And the brown aliens are great engineers. They will add two points of engine strength to your ship, as long as you have an engine strength greater than zero. A quick word of warning, if your ship loses a life support system, and this leaves an alien in a cabin that can no longer support it, you lose that alien. But don't worry, the poor little fella doesn't die, he just leaves in an emergency escape pod. He'll be fine. The penalty for building an illegal ship is worse in the full game. Before the flight phase, all players check each other's ships to make sure they are built correctly. Any components that are removed because of a mistake are placed on your shipboard and will count against you at the end of the flight. In the test flight, we came across some smugglers who tried to steal our stuff. Well, space is filled with two other kind of bad guys, slavers and pirates. Slavers force you to lose crew members, as shown on the card. And pirates are so angry, they just want to shoot at everyone. If the pirates defeat you, you're going to get shot at, as indicated on the card. Keep track of all the players who were defeated, and then roll dice for each shot, with the roll applying to all defeated players. Remember that light cannon fire can be stopped by shields, but there's no protection from heavy cannon fire. Also, in later rounds, meteors can come at your ship from left and right. As mentioned in the earlier videos, large meteors coming from the front can be blown up by forward pointing cannons in that column. But large meteors coming from the side can be blown up by cannons pointing towards that side in the same row or an adjacent row. This is summarised by the iconography here. There are other special events too, such as epidemic and sabotage, and these are fully explained in the rulebook, but trust me, they're not good. In the full game, if things go really badly, you may have to give up before you reach your destination. You can give up in one of the following four situations. One, you lose all human crew. This can happen if your crew get captured by slavers, or a meteor blows up the last crew cabin, or you could even voluntarily choose to lose your last crew for an abandoned ship. Two, open space with no engines. Thanks to the laws of physics, which cannot be broken, inertia will keep your ship floating until you reach your destination. But if you come across an open space card and you have no engines, then you have to give up. 3. Getting lapped. In the rare occasion that your ship on the flight track gets lapped by another player, you have to give up. And 4. You can actually choose to give up after any adventure card, but you must do so before the next card is revealed. If you give up, you remove your marker from the board and become a spectator for the rest of the round. You receive no bonuses for the order in which you finish, and you also cannot win the bonus for the prettiest ship. You do, however, get to sell your goods, but only at half the total price rounded up. And you still have to pay the penalty for components you lost along the way. Your cosmic credits will add up after each round of play, and at the end of the game, the total number of credits you have is your score. If your score is one or higher, then you win! Hooray! Of course, the player who has the most credits is probably more of a winner than everybody else, but that's not important. I hope you found these videos useful in learning how to play Galaxy Trucker. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more great games from Czech Games Edition, please visit their website. Take care, and thanks for watching.